Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at Lesson 3.3. Now, just a side note about Lesson 3.3 is this is one of the few lessons that we'll be covering where we're going to do it all in one day. So there's no need to do this in multiple days because we're just going to be looking at one major concept here. And that's uh, looking at some polynomial identities, especially dealing around factoring. So to begin with, I want you to take a minute and I want you to identify each of these as whether being their perfect square, the perfect cubed, both a perfect square and a perfect cubed, or neither. Now just a quick uh, review, a perfect square just means that there's something that you could square to get exactly that value. A perfect cube means that it's something that you could cube to get exactly that value. And there are times when they could be both items. So I want you to take a minute, see if you can figure out which ones of these are perfect squares, which ones are perfect cubes, which ones are both, and which ones are neither. So pause this video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you found those correctly. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so for this first one, you should have gotten that this is both a perfect square. 64 is both a perfect square and a perfect cubed. Because if you square 8, you get 64. And if we cube 4, we get 64. So that's both a perfect square and a perfect cube. However, 4x to the fourth is just a perfect square. Because if we were to square 2x squared, 2 squared is 4. And remember, when we have a variable with an exponent, the exponent and then the exponent outside the parentheses, we multiply those together. So 2 times 2 would be 4. So 2x squared squared would be 4x to the fourth. And there's nothing I could cube to get 4. And there's nothing I could uh, multiply 3 by to get 4. So this is a, just a perfect square. 18x squared, there's nothing I could square to get 18. Um, so I can just stop right there. That is not a perfect square. And it's also not a perfect cube. So it's neither. Um, and lastly, 8x cubed, well, 2 cubed would be 8, and if I cube x, I would get x cubed. So 2x quantity cubed would be 8x cubed, and so that is a perfect cube. So that's going to help lead into what we're going to be talking about today. So first off, there is you don't have to worry about writing this down in your notes, not this paragraph. This is just identifying what an identity is. Um, a mathematical statement that equates two polynomial expressions is an identity. If one side can be transformed into the other side using mathematical operations. These polynomial identities are helpful tools used to multiply and factor polynomials. So again, all that paragraph is saying is that we're going to identify some identities, which are basically just rules that we can use to help us when we want to simplify or factor uh, different polynomials. Now some of these, I'm going to give you some tricks that the book is not going to give you. Uh, let's start out with a difference of squares. So a difference of squares is when we have like a squared minus b squared. That can always be factored down to be a plus b times a minus b. So how is that useful? Let's say if we have 25x squared minus 36y squared, and we want to see, can that be factored? Well, I could look to see, are those a difference of squares? So is there something I could square to get 25x squared? Is there something I could square to get 36y squared? And yes, there is. If I square 5x, I would get 25x squared. If I square 6y, I would get 36y squared. So we could substitute 5x and 6y in to that equation, that, that identity there, for our a value and b value. So in other words, 25x squared minus 36y squared can factor to be 5x plus 6y times 5x minus 6y. Now if we have a square of a sum, meaning if we have a plus b in parentheses squared, that's the same as taking a plus b times a plus b. Now we did this in... Uh, when we're dealing with quadratics. And a real simple trick that we could use then, so in that way we don't have to always take a plus b times a plus b and either foil it or use the box method, is we could use this trick. And the trick would be to say whatever the first term is, we would square it, the a, we would square it, and then to get that middle term. Because remember, we're not just squaring the first and last terms, we're multiplying these two together, so we end up getting a middle term there. To find that middle term, it's always 2 times a times b. In other words, it's always 2 times that first value times the second value would always give us that middle term. And then we would end that with having plus whatever our last term is squared. So if I have 3x plus 4y and I'm squaring that, I could use this trick. Instead of having to foil it or take the box method and use 3x plus 4y times 3x plus 4y, I could use 3x as my a value and 4x, or 4y as my b value. So I could square the 3x to get 9x squared. Then I could take 2 times both of those terms. So 2 times 3x would be 6x, and 6x times 4y would be uh, 24xy. So we'd have 24xy as my middle term. So we plus 24xy, then plus, 
square that last term. So square 4y gives me 16y squared. Okay, let's, so let's look at another one. Another rule is what we call a difference of cubes. Now, I'm going to actually combine these difference of cubes and sum of cubes. Now, because there's a little acronym that we can use, because if you look at, uh, let's look at these, what it simplifies to be. So both of these simplify to have an A and a B here. They simplify to be A squared here. They have A, B in the middle and B squared at the end. The only thing that's different is the symbols in between there. I'm going to be honest with you. Even as a teacher, it was always hard for me to try to keep these straight. I'm terrible at memorizing things. Um, sometimes it's easier if you have an acronym or something to help keep those straight. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you this acronym called SOAP. So it's, let me, oh, I need a pen here, not a highlighter. So the acronym is SOAP, S-O-A-P. The S stands for same sign. The O stands for opposite sign. I'm going to skip down here. The AP stands for always positive. Sorry for my sloppy handwriting there. Um, so S stands for the same sign. O stands for the opposite sign. And then the AP stands for always positive. So how does that help? Well, that helps with the symbols in between there. If you can remember the process that the A, in the first set of parentheses, we're going to have whatever A is followed by B. In between there, we're going to have the same sign as what we had originally. So if we had A cubed minus B cubed, we're going to start with the minus, the same sign. If we have A cubed plus B cubed, again, we're going to start with the same sign in between the A and B. We're going to have a plus in that situation. So we start with the first sign is going to be the same sign. The next sign we come across is going to be the opposite sign. So if we have a cubed minus b cubed, we would go and we would have, we would square the a. Okay, so we'd have a squared. And then we would have the opposite sign that would follow it. So it'd be plus instead of a minus. And then we would have a times b. So it's always going to be that same process of a times b. Then it's always positive. So plus our b squared. So the process is always the same. You just have to remember that SOAP acronym to help you out. Because let's look back again at the a cubed plus b cubed. So we'd have the a and the b. Same sign in between them, so plus. And then we would have the a squared, and then the opposite sign, so minus, and then the ab, always positive, so plus b squared. So that's the way that I have discovered that's been a really easy trick for me to even remember that. So in that way, you don't have to memorize these as difference of cubes or sum of cubes. Just remember the process and that little acronym, that SOAP acronym. So let's look at some examples where we're going to use these different identities. Let's look at this first one. So this first one, we have 9m to the 4th minus 25n to the 6th. Well, that seems weird. Well, the first thing I want to look for is, is this a difference? Because I'm su subtracting here. By the way, we never have a sum of two squares. Okay, we never have a sum of two squares. If you look back at those properties, let's just do that. We have a difference of squares. It's not possible for me to factor down a sum of two squares. We don't have an identity for that. So if I have subtraction here, I want to look to see, is this a difference of two squared? So is there something I could square to get 9m to the fourth? And is there something I could square to get 25n to the sixth? Well, there is. If uh, they're both perfect squares. Because 9m to the fourth, that's the same as 3m squared, quantity being squared. Because 3 squared would be 9, and m squared would be m to the fourth. So 3m squared... We could square to get 9m to the 4th. Same thing is true with 25 to the end of the 6th. That is also a perfect square. Because 5 squared to give you 25. And n cubed, if you were to square that. Because remember, you multiply the exponents. If we were to square that, we would get n to the 6th. Now, it's important that you recognize that it's 5n cubed that's being squared. Don't switch the 3 and the 2 around. All right, so we're going to treat the 3m squared as your a value. And the 25 or the 5n cubed as our b value. So we could plug that into our formula. So we would have... Um, instead of a squared minus b squared, we'd have 3m squared squared minus 5n cubed squared. And so then breaks down to be, remember, a plus b times a minus b. So it'd be 5, 3m squared plus 5n cubed times 3m squared minus 5n cubed. And that's it. That's how you do that. Okay, so the, the hardest part sometimes is identifying what the a and b values are. But once you identify those, it's just a matter of plugging, in, plugging it in to your identity. So 
again, the factors, so that would factor down. They're just saying there, there what our answer would be. All right, so let's look at another one. So this one we have x cubed minus 216. So this is a difference of two cubes. So now we want to look to see are they perfect cubes? And they are because you could cube x to get x cubed. Now what could we cube to get 216? Well, if you're not sure, on your calculator you would take the cube root of 216 and you would get 6. Okay, so you use a cube root to get 216 to get 6. So that means 6 cubed would be 216. So our a value is x, our b value is 6. So how does that work? So then we're going to have, um, so I'm just going to skip down here to the end. So we would have the x is our a value, so we'd start with that. Then we'd have the same sign, so we'd have a minus, and then we'd have our b value, which is 6. We're going to have x minus 6 in parentheses. Then the next set of parentheses, remember we always square the a value. So the a value, the x value squared would be x squared. Then it's going to be the opposite sign using that SOAP acronym. So same sign, opposite sign. So the opposite sign would be plus. And then we would take the A and B values and multiply them together. Well, X times 6 is 6X. We need to look at the B value as just being the 6, by the way. It's not a negative 6. Okay, so going back to what we had um, up here, let me get a highlighter. Again, the A value, oops, let me not use red. Um, our A value is x, our b value is 6. So that's what we're using here. So 6 times x would be 6x there in the middle. Then it's always positive, so plus, then we take that b value, that 6, and square it, and we would get 36. So that is how we would factor that one down. Now we could use this, now this isn't going to be something that we're going to do very often, but we could technically do this if we didn't have a calculator at our disposal to figure out what 11 cubed plus 5 cubed would be. We could use the same process. Because again, this would be a sum of two cubes. So our a value would be 11, and our b value would be 5. So we would have a plus b, so we would have 11 plus 5 in parentheses, So because again, we start with the same sign. Then we'd have 11 squared, which would be 121, and then it would be the opposite sign, so minus. Our a times b multiply together, so 11 times 5, or 55. Then always positive, plus, and then our b value squared, 5 squared, or 25. And so we would simplify that, and you could get 16 times 91. Now, again, I don't know why we would want to do this anyhow, because who wants if, if we're going to pull out a calculator to do 16 times 91, why wouldn't we pull out a calculator to begin, to begin with? But it's just making a point that we could do this technically without a calculator and get 1,456. Usually, though, this is not how we're going to be using these identities, just to give you a heads up. All right. I want you guys to try this one. So I want you to look at this m to the 8th minus 9n to the 10th. Now that is it. I'll just give you a hint. That's a difference of squares. So we want to figure out what would you square to get m to the 8th? What would we square to get 9n to the 10th? And then I want you to factor that down using the a and b values. And then the next one is a difference of two cubes. So you want to figure out what would we cube to get 27x to the 9th? What would we cube to get 343y to the 6th? And factor that one down. So pause this video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've done both of these correctly. All right, how'd you do? Let's check it out. So for that first one, you should have gotten m to the fourth plus three n to the fifth times m to the fourth minus three n to the fifth. Now if you switch those around and if you had m to the fourth minus three n to the fifth first and m to the fourth plus three n to the fifth second, it's totally fine, it's the same thing. Um, but to get that answer, you should have identified that m to the fourth is what we would square to get m to the 8th. Because when you multiply 4 times 2, you'd get 8. And 3n to the 5th would give you, uh, squared, would give you 9n to the 10th. Because 3 squared is 9, and n to the 5th power squared, you multiply those two together, 5 times 2 is 10. All right, so that's how you get that one. Now the next one, to figure out what our difference of cubes are, to figure out what your a and b values would be, we would figure out what would we cube to get 27x to the 9th. Well, that would be 3x cubed. Because 3 cubed is 27, and x cubed, cubed, would be x to the ninth. And for the other one, 7 cubed is 343. And if you didn't know that, you could use your calculator. Take the cube root of 343 to get 7. And y squared, if you were to cube that, you'd get y to the 6. So those are our a and b values. So again, we'd have 3x cubed, then the same sign, so minus our b value, which is 7y squared. Then we would square a value. When you square 3x cubed, 3 cubed, or I'm sorry, 3 squared would be 9. And when we would square x to the cube, or x cubed, we would get x to the 6. We get 9x to the 6 there. 
And then we'd multiply the A and B values together. So if we took 3 times 7, we get 21. Um, oh, and by the way, we get an opposite sign in between there, so we plus. So we plus 21, and then when you multiply x cubed times y squared, we just leave it as x squared y squared. Don't say it's xy to the 6. Don't do anything weird like that. We just leave it as x cubed y squared. And then it's always positive, so plus. Then we would square the b value. When I square 7y squared, we'd get 49y to the 4th. Well, that's it. That's all we have to do for this lesson, for lesson 3.3. So hopefully you understand how to use those identities. And remember, for the sums and difference of cubes, to use that SOAP acronym to help you remember uh, and keep straight what the different signs are in between the values. So good luck as you'll be working then on your assignment.